Now we're going to talk about the innovation matrix. This is a trademark proprietary matrix that Centrally Human developed specifically for people like you to demystify, harness, and activate against your imagination. How do you turn ideas into innovations? How do you turn an innovation concept into actuality? So we'll walk through this matrix one at a time to really help you understand what it's saying. But the idea is that innovation is everything. That is a broad concept and a broad statement to make. This matrix breaks it down for you. So on the vertical axis, it ranges from net new to optimize. New meaning never existed before. Optimize meaning you're improving something that's already in existence. On the horizontal axis, you've got everything from expansive, it has a wide ranging impact, to iterative, it's something small. But as we all know, a beach is nothing but millions and millions and billions of little pieces of sand. Iterative innovations are really powerful. So let's look at something that sits in the new and expansive quadrant. Something new that changes an organization or literally creates a new market. An example of this would be the smartphone. Right? Did not exist before, created a new market. No one went out and asked for a smartphone. Um, you know, the, the combination of different functionalities and the advancements of this idea of applications and widgets inside a device is pretty net new and expansive. It's global reaching created new industries, it affects our day-to-day -day life, and it functionally didn't really exist before. So now let's look at something that is new but an iteration. So reimagining something in existence for a business or a functional area or an industry. So a great example of this would be the smartwatch. So when the smartwatch was created, it technically was new right? It was a, a computer on your wrist and it has a whole different functionality, but it was also iterative and small. You know, people were wearing watches already, so it had that small step change. So you can make an argument that while the technology and the design and the whole industry was new, this idea of wear, wearable devices and technologies, it was an iteration on something that we already did. Watches were already on our wrists, and smartphones were already in existence. So that kind of step change, that nudge, made it iterative and, and different versus creating something um, wide reaching. So expansive and optimize, something in this quadrant would be a complete reworking of an existing process or product that affects an organization. The idea of an agile workflow versus a waterfall workflow is something that could fit here. So waterfall is a way of doing business, a way of getting a project, a project or a process done. Agile is a different way of, a different means to the same end. So it has wide ranging effects, right? It completely changes the way products, computers, companies exist. The expansiveness across people and processes and verticals and it's global is huge. It's created whole new practice areas and job descriptions and courses in school. And yet we're just optimizing a different way to go from point A to point B. And then finally, something that op is an optimized and an iterative quadrant. A smaller, subtle adjustment to an existing process that makes a change. So the example I like to use here, if you work in Excel and you identify a macro or formula that helps shave off five minutes of your time, if you have a non innovative mindset and identity. You'll make that change and you won't share it because you won't think much of it. But an innovative mindset and an innovator would identify that five minutes saved by one person multiplied by the amount of people that do that is time saved, money saved, and it frees everybody up to either relax, go home early, be less frantic, have freed up brain space to think of new ideas, the possibilities are endless. So it's something small and very iterative and you're just optimizing a way of doing things. But that quadrant is very critical. That's going to be what's going to drive growth for many organizations and individuals over the next decade. We've got a lot in play right now. 
So the trick is, how do you get smart and crafty and iterative and realize the value of small ideas at scale? We're gonna stop here. I want you to sit and think about this matrix and then come back to the next lesson and we're gonna do an activity. So, this is the innovation matrix. It was developed based on experience, put in practice over many, many years, tested across every single industry, individual, you name it, it works. You're a stay-at-home parent, you're a 15 year old in high school, you're a corporate executive, Anything can be applied to this matrix because you're a human being with an imagination, translating that imagination and ideas into something that works, mapping it onto the matrix so you can identify where in this realm of innovation does it exist versus throwing it out because you don't think it's big enough or maybe it's too big, and then being able to look at it on a piece of paper and plan around it. The trick is to get the idea out of your head and into the innovation matrix. That's what makes it real. That's where the fun can start.